Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Uh, many of you have been asking me to put up the important topics which are asked from the endocrine system. So let's quickly go through the important topics. First, let's start with the pituitary gland. The easiest question which they can ask you is to list the hormones which are secreted by the pituitary gland. If that is the question, you are supposed to list the hormones coming from both the anterior as well as the posterior pituitary. Next is one hormone which you have to study from the anterior pituitary gland is the growth hormone. Both the actions as well as the regulation of the growth hormone can be asked. Remember that when we are speaking regarding the actions of the growth hormone, the growth hormone has got what is called as a direct action and it has also got the action which is occurring via one more chemical which is called as somatomedin C or these are also called as insulin like growth factors. So don't forget to write both of them direct as well as the indirect which is occurring via the somatomedin C. Now, somatomedin C itself separately can be asked as a question, okay, it can be, it, it may not be a long essay, it can be asked as a uh, short note, either as per your university, it can be either a 5 marker or a 6 marker. Next, very important, all these three uh, applied are the clinical aspects of the growth hormone, acromegaly, uh, gigantism as well as dwarfism, these days they are asking you clinically oriented questions, so they can give you the clinical features of both acromegaly, gigantism and also in some cases dwarfism and they might ask you to identify the particular clinical condition and then they can ask you the questions of the growth hormone like uh, again explain the actions of the concerned hormone which is involved in this particular condition and all those things so remember this and also remember one very important difference between gigantism and acromegaly is that in gigantism the height is abnormally tall in acromegaly it is not occurring but there are few cases which can move from gigantism into acromegaly first i started with gigantism and then my age has passed where the epiphysis has already fused so now i am going into acromegaly so herein i can get the features of both gigantism as well as acromegaly so very important don't miss acromegaly and gigantism now coming to the posterior pituitary two hormones are there one of them is vasopressin again here they can ask you the actions and the regulations of vasopressin or the adh how it is regulated then uh, they can ask you the clinical question which is diabetes insipidus again they can give you the clinical case scenario and ask you to identify as to what is this condition that is diabetes insipidus very 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 important actions of oxytocin very favorite question two actions are there one is with respect to the milk ejection another one is with respect to the parturition both of them are important and again a very favorite question of all the examiners that is the milk ejection reflex which is also called as the neuroendocrine reflex so these are the topics which you are supposed to concentrate on with respect to the pituitary gland next move to the thyroid gland again a very important gland wherein they can ask you the synthesis of the thyroid hormones and how they are secreted there are different steps i think i have already made a video have a look at that video actions of the thyroid hormones that is t3 and t4 how they are regulated again these two in combination could be well, long essays very important then again extremely important both the clinical conditions hyperthyroidism as well as hypothyroidism again these can be asked in the form of clinical case scenarios and they will ask you to identify as to what is the condition whether it is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism then these four topics less important but that can these can be asked that is graves disease a form of hyperthyroidism cretinism a form of infantile hypothyroidism where there is also dwarfism and we have to differentiate between the pituitary dwarf and the thyroid dwarf mixed edema again a form of hypothyroidism and the thyroid function tests usually asked in biochemistry but you never know can be also asked in the physiology next is the adrenal gland again list the hormones produced by the adrenal gland if at all they are asking you this question again here you are supposed to write the hormones coming both from the cortex as well as from the medulla okay and in the cortex we are having uh, three zones the hormones coming from the three areas and the hormones coming from the medulla adrenal medulla and very important again actions and the regulations of the glucocorticoids there are so many actions of the glucocorticoids remember each each one of them and sometimes in few of the question papers i have seen specifically they have asked what is called as the anti-inflammatory action of the glucocorticoids you're supposed to describe that okay how is it that the glucocorticoids are going to have an anti-inflammatory action sometimes anti-allergic action is asked but mostly discuss the anti-inflammatory actions of the glucocorticoids is a short note for you guys remember that uh, I cannot uh, tell you how important this topic is. Cushing syndrome repeatedly asked as a clinical case scenario, centripetal obesity, moon phases, stray on the abdomen, uh, poor wound healing, hyperglycemia, uh, the patient is taking long term steroids. So what it is? It's a Cushing syndrome. They will ask you to identify what it is. They will ask you to, again, they will ask uh, 
explain the actions of the hormone which is involved here explain the regulations explain the the physiological basis of the uh, symptoms and signs which you are seeing here less important is of course addison's disease do have a look at that sometimes addison's can be asked as a short very short answer like either a two marks or a three marks question then of course not only glucocorticoids we have the another set of hormones that's mineralocorticoids again mineralocorticoids action as well as regulation both are very important and they can also ask mechanism of action remember that mechanism of action is not asked for all the hormones there are few hormones which are uh, in interest wherein they can ask you the mechanism and aldosterone is one of such hormones because aldosterone is acting on the distal tubule of the kidney how is it that aldosterone is going to cause uh, uh, reabsorption of the sodium okay i think i have made a video have a look at that so mechanism of action is also important for aldosterone and one very uh, uh, famous question which can be asked as either a two or a three marker uh, like very short answer question that is aldosterone escape and this aldosterone escape is related to this syndrome which is called as the primary hyperaldosteronism again do read this as to what happens in primary hyperaldosteronism there is an excessive secretion of aldosterone with respect to that what features do you get and all that and uh, uh, in the con syndrome of course when there is in excessive sodium reabsorption there is also water reabsorption and there should be edema but there is no edema why there is no edema the reason for that is aldosterone escape something to do with atrial natriuretic peptide okay just go through these questions and coming to the adrenal medulla they can ask you the actions of adrenaline and noradrenaline more important is their actions on the cardiovascular system okay go through the actions because they are coming into play when we have what is called as fight or flight reaction fine so this is adrenal gland these are the topics which you should concentrate on coming to the endocrine pancreas uh, they can again ask you to list out the hormones which are produced remember that hormones are different from the enzymes so don't get confused between enzymes and the hormones they can ask you to again list out the hormones which are secreted from the endocrine pancreas we have the islets and we have the alpha cells beta cells and so on i'm not going into the details you read that here again one more hormone which is important with respect to the mechanism of secretion as to how it is secreted and the mechanism of action both are different i have made a video have a look at that how is insulin secreted is different and how is insulin acting is different okay then actions of course very very important these are then of course uh, one of the epidemics we have in our country diabetes mellitus it can be a case-based questions they are going to give you the case scenarios and they can tell they can give you the fbs ppbs value hba1c value and come to the diagnosis of course it should be diabetes mellitus three important clinical features you might be already knowing the polyuria the polyphagia and the uh, polydipsia all these three they will give you and they will ask you to identify what it is and they can then they can ask you uh, describe the actions of the hormone which is involved in it, describe the mechanism of action of the hormone what is it which is causing all those three symptoms with respect to diabetes mellitus yeah that's what i told other hormones which are secreted by the pancreas like your glucagon and all that and what are their actions next coming to the calcium homeostasis don't forget the calcium homeostasis herein they can ask you again to list the hormones which are involved in the calcium homeostasis here we have three important hormones the para parathormone the calcitonin and the vitamin d uh, so you should know these are the three hormones and what's the role of the different hormones in the maintenance of the serum calcium level role means what are their actions where they are acting and how is it they are helping in the maintenance of the serum calcium uh, which is the hormone which is going to increase the serum calcium which is the hormone which is going to decrease the serum calcium level and where is it that they are acting so as to increase or decrease the serum calcium levels separately they can ask you the actions of parathyroid hormone it can be a five marker or a six marker they can separately ask you the actions of calcitonin as well as the vitamin d very important question okay hypocalcemic tetany which occurs in conditions like hypoparathyroidism because of hypocalcemia we have very important clinical signs here like the carpopedal spasm and all that so that's also important uh and uh sorry i'm just going to my last slide here okay 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 okay, okay. fine so i have already discussed this so at last we have hypocalcemic tetany and sometimes they can also ask you hypo and hyperparathyroidism so if you have any more topics which i have missed out while telling regarding the endocrine system please leave them in the comment section so that it will be helpful for other people also thanks a lot for watching take care bye bye